decides that I'm an object and does unspeakable and tragic things to me? Am I a child supposed to carry and birth another child? Am I to put my body through the physical trauma of pregnancy? Am I to suffer the mental implications? A child who had no say in what was being done with my body. Some in here say they are pro-life. What about my life? That's a 12-year-old speaking before state legislature, the state legislature in West Virginia. Her name is Addison Gardner, and she is among dozens of people who showed up to that very hearing to voice their concerns about a, an anti-abortion proposal, which ultimately passed in the state house. Now, lawmakers are currently considering House Bill 302, which would ban almost all abortions except for pregnancies with medical emergencies, ectopic pregnancies, or fetuses deemed medically non-viable. And what I love is that here you have a, a young girl, she's 12 years old. Most 12 year olds are not really privy to what's happening in state and local politics, but she's very much aware. She understands the consequences and she has the courage to stand there and deliver in such an eloquent, articulate way. How much hypocrisy is behind this notion that these lawmakers are doing it to protect life? And Emma, I have a lot more context in regard to how West Virginia lawmakers got to this point. But before I get to all of that, I wanted to hear your thoughts on um, Addison because I just thought she was incredible. I mean, go Addison. When I was 12 years old, I was just so afraid of being liked that I would never, never stand up for what was right to that degree or put myself out there like that. That takes an Im immense amount of intestinal fortitude, as they say. And so she deserves all the credit in the world. And I'm sure she's going to go on to do great things because if she has the confidence then, hey, she'll, she should have it later in life as well, many times fold. But I, I, the the exceptions um, that were listed there are really what stands out to me. And I just want people who are watching this to uh, get in the habit of dismissing every time there's a discussion about exceptions for a miscarriage or for rape or incest because they're largely red herrings mm -hmm. as a way to design to uh, distract from the brutality of the bill. Uh, for rape and incest exceptions, you would have to prove that in the court of law. Do you know how long that would take? At least months, maybe years. And the pregnancy would go all the way through at that point. So it right. is just a way to dilute the brutality of what Republicans are trying to do across these state legislatures across the, across the country. Um, and it's very similar for life of the mother because what they're trying to do in those instances are just to get the doctors way too afraid to do anything at all. Uh, and so, hey, yep. um, it's, it has a chilling effect. And all of those, uh, the, the, those caveats are just a way to distract from the reality of Republican brutality. You know, Emma, it's such an important point, And I'm happy that you're making it here because I get kind of irritated with how both the media and our politicians get stuck at debating exceptions to this incredibly draconian treatment of women. Because in reality, it, all of those exceptions would require the woman to explain what she's going through. Like, just think about what that experience is and how much you want to keep that. Like, you'd have to explain yourself and give detailed information about your private life to the government in order to qualify for an exception. To make a decision about your own life, your own health, your own body. I like, let's move on. It, it, it actually infuriates me almost as much as when the leaked draft opinion was being reported on. And inevitably, you have some members of the media who are obsessed about who the leaker is. Oh, who yeah. cares? Who cares? Who I cares? Don't care at all. Doesn't but matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. And when you and and when you engage in that battle, you're following into falling into Republicans' traps about yep. that. They also want to frame abortion as something that just happens and can only be acceptable when something so awful has happened to you, like a medical emergency or rape or incest. Then that horrible act, that horrible act of ending a pregnancy, is acceptable. 
No, it's always, always acceptable for a woman to take control of her own body. And so it, it, the framing of it is is a disaster. Like I, I don't think anyone, any woman should have to explain or disclose all these detailed personal elements of her life to the government to be able to make a decision about her body. And by the way, the very people who are now forcing women to go through this are the ones who just, I know I've made this point before, but I can't get over it. They were crying about the invasiveness of wearing a mask during the pandemic, dealing with a highly contagious virus. They thought it was the biggest violation of their personal liberties. But let's just take a moment to consider what a body goes through in nine months of pregnancy. And also what a body goes through during childbirth in a country where the maternal mortality rate is the highest of any developed nation. Just think about that. And then on top of it, there's no support for medical care and how to pay for it. There's no social safety net for someone living in poverty who wouldn't be able to afford raising a child. And the response from these right wingers is, well, just put, put the kid up for, I mean, if you can't do it, you just put the kid up for adoption. Lots of people want to adopt your kids. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. No, well, they don't. The, the, they don't They don't adopt any of the kids already in foster care. There are exactly. thousands and thousands and thousands of children all throughout this country. It is not about that. It's about controlling women and it's about saying, hey, you're in an abusive relationship. Well, if you're pregnant, you don't really have an option to leave. And if you want to have some economic independence, hey, maybe you don't really have an option to do that because you have to raise this child that you didn't want. I mean, there are. It's all about controlling women, and and they work backwards from that. And so you always have to reframe it in that way. Exactly. And so what was the aftermath of this hearing? Well, unfortunately, hours after Gardner spoke. Uh, the and Addison Gardner, the 12 year old, uh, the House narrowly adopted an amendment to the bill to allow abortions in cases of rape or incest. But the exception in the amendment, which passed uh, 46 to 43, is allowed only up to 14 weeks of pregnancy and only if the rape or incest is reported to police. I mean, it is. Yeah. Beyond invasive, it is a violation of a, a, a person's autonomy. It's a violation of their freedoms, a violation of patient doctor privilege. It's just, it is exactly what Republicans claim to be against, which is big government controlling your life. I, but whenever I, they, they talk about small government, I sorry. just want you all to remember, they're not talking about small government impacting the lives of ordinary Americans, right? They want big government impacting the lives of ordinary working Americans. They want small government for one thing and one thing only. And that is corporations. Boom. They don't yep. want any government intervention. They don't want any labor laws protecting us. They don't want them to have to do, you know, they don't want employers to have to pay minimum wage. They don't want employers to have to provide decent working standards and conditions to keep us safe. They want government out of any type of regulation that would impact corporations and and cut into the profits that these corporations can make. But when it comes to us, oh, they can't get enough of that big government. Big government all day, baby. Yeah, and again, these exceptions for incest and rape. Say you're a victim of incest and you're 14 years old. It's your dad, it's your uncle. You gotta report that to the police. If yeah. not, if not, you gotta have that baby. And the reality is that they think and even uh, uh, Matt Walsh, the conservative commentator said it. If you're not in a position to deal with the consequences of having sex, you better not have sex. That's what they say, they perceive it as a punishment. If you're going to be promiscuous or if you're gonna be uh, so bold as to have a baby or, or take your reproductive health into your own hands and not have it be completely at the whim of the inseminating partner, the male, uh, cis male or, or, or whatever. Uh, then you deserve to be punished for it. And the baby will be your punishment, and that is the reality. It's a theocracy, yes. and they have to launder it through a variety of other talking points because what yep. they're advocating for is so brutal and unpopular that they have to hide the ball. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.